I think today has potential. Mm hmm. It's a new day, chickens. Today I'm working on the barn project. We're gonna get this floor filled and get everything moved into here and some other stuff. Just this one bay needs stone put in it. Yesterday, Hillary and I went through and we cleaned out all the holes that the bulls had dug in here. We're gonna flatten it up and make it look new again. Yep, 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 yep. You need a new tractor, they say. Here's what we wind up with after initial filling. We got lots of little piles in here. It's very bumpy. To smooth it out, I'm gonna use this box blade. After I get the floor rough graded off, then there's areas that need to be shimmed, and that's usually around the edges. So I bring in some little piles, and pile them here and there where I see low spots. And smoothing them out on the edges is hand work. There's no way to get around it. Getting better. The basics of fill. This fill is a greater mixture of fine. Silt is fine. Clay and silt are fine. All the way up through little stones. And when you have a mixture like this, it compacts. I can squeeze it with my hands. So if you ever use fill like this, you have to compact it or else it's gonna settle on its own and it'll settle irregularly. I run over it again and again with a tractor when I'm grading it off to compact it enough for this usage. If you're putting down a concrete slab or something like that, you wanna fill that's either kind of fully compacted or in the high 90s compaction percentage or you can use clean stone and clean stone is graded according to size. All the fines are washed out of it and you can get different sizes. They're graded by numbers and letters according to size. If you're using clean fill, it doesn't really require any compaction. So say you've dug out a basement and you're gonna pour a slab and you're right on undisturbed ground, you can put 
clean stone in as a base for the slab and you don't have to run a compactor. So there you go, we're gonna finish getting this crated off. Bossy pig, look at your face. Well, you've been really rooting, haven't you? <laughs> yeah. Grading it off again, and then more hand work. I've got this the way I want it, so now I'm going to take the rest of my pile and I'm going to lose it in here and flatten all this out, or slope it gradually that way. I've been working away at this driveway for half an hour or so, and I think I'm almost there. Here at this end of the barn, I had a big hump, and then it's slower at the other end, so I smoothed it out, took this hump down probably six inches, and kind of pulled it over this way, and some of it I ran around and filled some low spots in this other driveway. And what we got going on here is the driveway slopes off, slopes down this way, and then kind of the crown is right here and then it slopes back toward the back side of the barn. As my structural engineering professor always said in college, everything that man builds has to slope some way if it's sitting outside and it would be preferable if the barn sloped from the back all the way out to the front but I would have had to have a lot more stone to do that so I think this way will work pretty well. The stone's fairly permeable, drain and not puddle. Not to be sexist, the things that women build outside need to slope too. You can mess around with a box plate forever, dinking around trying to get everything perfect, but I think that looks pretty good. I'm happy with it. Not bad for an old barn. This is a wide front from the Super C. Even though I put a narrow front on it, the front stays with the tractor. Just grease up the spindles really good so they don't rust and safe in storage here.
We're getting there. Now we gotta go up here. Titus is standing right there on the other side of no man's land. He's got his come hither call going for the heifers over here. You guys ain't buying it, are ya? No. That's it. Everything's in this barn with one bait of spare once we get the stuff cleaned up. All the tractors are in here. Finally, what's it been, four months? And up here in the upper barn, there's nothing but hay and cattle in the winter time. This was the plan all along. So now I can park the 504 up here with the hay spear on it in the winter time. I can take it right off the pile and feed it over here to the main herd and over here to the heifers without ever going outside. I am standing here in the new addition in the barn for the cattle in the winter and looking at the feeder panels. Here at the junction of two panels where I bolted them together I have a gap that's too wide. So I took a piece out of one of the other feeder panels and I'm gonna weld it in here. He's gonna weld in a hay barn? What's he thinking? He's gonna burn it down. I'll have to have Henry stand fire watch tonight. I am a lousy welder. I just do what I need to do to get by. Metalworking is really not my thing. I prefer woodworking, actually. But you can't be a farmer and not know how to weld. What I did for these spaces is I took a piece of pipe and I cut it at the right angle on the chop saw and then I whacked on it with a sledgehammer on an anvil to flatten it out so I could weld it to the other pipes. And of course before I weld it, I wet down this column, sort of thoroughly soak everything. This barn addition is now ready to go. I'm done. Here's the outside. <laughs> These two gates here so I can open them up and clean the manure out the bedding pack in the winter time. So from the gates here where I pull the manure out, the manure is gonna go right down 
and right in there to be composted. So the addition on this side will be outside the fence. The fence is going to run right at the toe of the slope here and back over to the old barn. And then if we walk along to the back of the addition, opposite those two gates I was shown, we have the gate for the cattle to get in and out. And so that fence I was talking about running from the other side down at the toe of the slope comes and ends here and will return to the barn but on this side, the fence will run at the toe of this slope where all this garbage is growing that I got to clean out and run at the toe of the slope there to the gate at the end. Now, if I stand here at the addition and look out, there's a straight shot to where the manure is going to be piled. This area here, I've decided to wait to finish grading because the shop is going to go in right in this area. It's going to be about the same size as this garden that we have in here. And I thought, well, this will make a good lay down area. For materials when they're building this. In a nutshell, everything is done except for the fence and it is a load off of my mind. This has been a ton of work, stress, moving animals around. I'm glad it's done. This completes a busy week of work for Hillary and I, but there's no rest for us. We've got to get into the winter chicken house next and clean out the bedding pack in preparation for the hens moving in later this fall. And next week we have a really busy butchering week. It's time to start taking the turkeys and we have to finish up the broilers out on pasture. I haven't shown the animals much because we've been so busy in these last two videos. There just hasn't been time for anything but basic chores. So I'm gonna end this video with a special treat. I put the camera out as the turkeys were getting ready for bed and I'm gonna share with you how they tuck in for the night. I hope you enjoy it. Have a great day and I'll see you next time.